Hi, I'm Lyle. My day job is selling boats, but today I'm selling our Dodge Ram SRT 10. The SRT stands for Street Racing Technology, which is Dodge's performance vehicle division, and the 10 relates to the 10 solar engine that's in this thing. This is a 2005 truck. It's got 68,360 miles currently on the clock, and it's fitted with that 8.3 liter, a 500 horsepower V10 straight out of a Dodge Viper. It is an absolute animal to drive and it's really mean and imposing looking. It's got a flame red clear coat paint scheme. It stands out from the crowd, turns heads like nothing normal. It puts a huge smile on your face and it's just an awesome bit of kit. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna walk you around the truck. We're gonna show you all the features inside it. We're gonna give you a good look around the engine bay. We're gonna fire the thing up as well so you can hear it run. We're gonna also take it out and run on the road so you can see how it performs on your way. And hopefully, we just want to give you as much information as we can about the vehicle and help you to make up your mind whether this could be the truck for you. Running a boat business and being a self-confessed petrol head, I'm constantly on the lookout for sort of cool tow vehicles. So I'm always looking for something that's a bit different, that is usually high performance, um, that I can justifiably put through as a business expense, and also that I can have a bit of fun with on the weekends. So. It tends to be American pickup trucks, stuff like that. I've always wanted one of these Dodge Ram SRT 10s. I mean, they're, they're just such an iconic truck. They only made them for three years, from 2004 to 2006. And they only built the quad cab version, which this one is, from, uh, for two years, 05 and 06. There was less than 4,000 total units ever produced. Um, and they held the, uh, the world record for the fastest ever production pickup truck. I mean, the thing has 500 horsepower on tap. It does not be 60 in just over five seconds. It runs right up to just shy of 150 mile an hour. Um, I mean, my other car is that Porsche uh, Carrera 2S. And in a straight line, this thing here will give it a serious run for its money. The fact that you can do that in a one and a half ton pickup truck that still tows three and a half ton is just phenomenal in my book. Um, I, think, I think it already, in my mind, this is already a classic car. In the future, they can only they can only go up in value. I, I'm convinced. You know, if you go and try and buy a, a Dodge Viper, the only other way you get one of those motors is in a proper Dodge Viper, and you will not buy one of those for less than about 40 grand. And um, so, I I do think they're seriously undervalued at the minute. These trucks, and as the years go by, if they're kept in really good condition, I think that they're they're definitely going to hold their money and probably increase in value. Um, like I said, less than 4,000 ever built. This flame red to me is the nicest colour that was produced and they only ever built 1200 of them. I know there's a few more, there's, there's bigger numbers of the single cab version but there's just something about those, the proportions don't look right to me. Uh, they always look very stumpy and um, they're two seater, they're just, they're not a very practical vehicle whereas this thing here, it has full six seats in the cabin, it's got a huge big bed in the back, you can use it as I said like, a, like an ordinary pickup truck, you can go on holidays with it, you can tow your boat uh, throughout the continent with it, you can do all sorts of stuff, but it still has that phenomenal power under the bonnet and it's got the road presence that comes along with it as well. Um, so I really love this thing, it's a phenomenal bit of kit. This one's in beautiful condition as well, um, as you'll see now as we walk around it. Starting with this big imposing grill on the front of this vehicle, um, <laughs> you see this thing coming down the road, it just looks like it means business, it's really mean looking with the, uh, the big hood scoop on it, the oversized power bulge with a power bulge in the bonnet with a viper powered badge on both sides of it. It's got a really low skirt at the front with that like, black mesh grill in it and then you've got the chrome detailing up on the, on the main grill, the dodge badge in the centre. It just looks like a serious bit of kit. We have done wee bits and pieces. This, where we found this truck, um, it was in really nice condition. They did a few wee bits and pieces to tidy up on it. So one of those things was the, the bumper had a, quite a few stone chips and stuff in it. So we had the bumper repainted. And um, because it looks so good with the number plate off, I haven't uh, bothered to put the number plate back on again, but there's a few different options where you can place that plate. And I've decided to sort of let the new owner make up their mind on that. Um, but it's, uh, the front of the car is in really impressive and it's all in beautiful condition. Coming down along the side of the truck, the bodywork is phenomenal. It's never, to my, well, to my knowledge, we've been around it in detail, it's never been damaged. Um, there's no big dents or scuffs, it's, it's in beautiful condition, really nice shine off the paintwork. 
all the bags and stuff. We've got the Ram SRT10 bags here, so all the original bags in really good condition. Actually, whenever we were getting the bumper painted, we decided to color code the mirrors and the door handles because I'd seen that done on a couple of trucks online and I thought it really lifted it with the black, the plain black mirrors and plain black door handles. It just looked a wee bit dull and sort of cheapened the truck a wee bit. So I decided to get those color coded with the same flame red paint color as the rest of the truck and I think it really lifts it, makes it look more imposing from the front end as well. Got a nice smoke tent on the windows. Uh, we've got our little Gulfstream uh, boat sales badges on here on the side windows and the back window but we decided to put those on the glass so that they wouldn't mark the paintwork so they're really easy to take off and they won't leave any marks on there. They've only been on for uh, maybe a month or something. Um, coming right the way back, rear quarter panels in beautiful condition, all the bumpers are in beautiful condition. Um, this one has the tonneau cover as well which is, you don't find that on a lot of them um, but this one has the, uh, the uh, SRT tonneau cover with the boot spoiler on there as well. Um, you can lock this as well so it really adds to the practicality of the truck and then the rear end of it is in immaculate condition also. We also give the rear bumper a quick lick of paint because there, were, there was a couple of wee things in that and the, the tread, the step had a couple of wee, um, just the paint was getting a wee bit tatty on it. Now I took a bunch of photographs of the truck before we did any of this work so you can see exactly what it looked like. Uh, beforehand just to reassure anybody that there was no damage, it wasn't any impact, it was never hit. Um, it was literally just a few scuffs and scrapes so we painted that back bumper to clean that up and the back end of the truck now looks fantastic I think. Got the um, twin chrome uh, tailpipes on it there in the back end. Um, the, the truck is actually fitted with a Magnaflow aftermarket exhaust so um, that was done by the, the second owner so I, We'll fire it up for you to hear it, but this thing is seriously loud. Now there, we also have the original exhaust. He kept the original exhaust and I got it whenever I bought the truck. So if you want to, you can go back to the factory exhaust, but that Magnaflow, it sounds phenomenal. Um, and it really does. It, uh, people, people know you're coming uh, driving this vehicle. Um, so yeah, everything else in the back end looks the part. We'll flick up the, uh, the tunnel cover lid here. You can see we've got the... Uh, the factory SRT uh, bed liner in there, cleats in the corners, um, and then a black sort of truck and liner paint all the way around the, uh, the, end, the, bed, the bed of the truck. So um, it's in beautiful condition as well. Really hasn't done very much this truck in the way of work. And um, it's a, you know, obviously that's a really fantastic load bay there for if you are looking to use this boat in a practical sort of capacity. There's a ton of history with this uh, particular pickup truck. It has had only uh, three owners from New were the third owners. Um, the first owner was at, in Illinois in the United States and that was back in October 2005 when it was first registered. It then came to the UK in April 2007 to the, the second owner. So at that stage the truck had, I think it was 28,000 miles or 28,500 miles on it and that was April 2007. Since then, it's been owned by a gentleman um, near Belfast here in Northern Ireland, so it's a Northern Irish truck. I think it's one of only, as far as we know, it's one of only two in the country in Ireland. Um, there's not very many in the UK either. Um, there's another, there's a black one as well in, uh, in Ireland and, and this one, so, so we're told. Um, but he had it since 2007, took it to a lot of the American truck shows, looked after it um, really well. I uh, drove it fairly sparingly, it's got, as I said, it's just over 68,000 miles on it now. Um, now whenever it came in in 07, he had a, an auto gas and LPG system installed in the truck. Um, so it does, it's dual fuel, so you can run it on petrol or on gas. Um, it's just, it just that helps with the running costs a wee bit. Um, personally speaking, I like to run it on petrol just because I think it runs a wee bit smoother, a wee bit nicer. But if you're going a long journey, the gas system is really good, extends your range and makes it a wee bit you know, more fuel efficient. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's, there's a big file with it, all the history is there. It's been MOT, the, the current MOT expires in February 2017. Now that's getting pretty close, so I'm quite happy to put a fresh MOT on it um, for the new, the new owner. So we'll get an MOT before it goes anywhere, so you'll have a full year's MOT. And, um, as, you, you, as we walk around the truck in more detail, you'll see that it's perfect. I mean, it needs nothing. We are um, getting it serviced as well. 
I'm just waiting on a couple of parts coming from the States. Rear brake pads are coming from the US, so once they come in, we're going to get serviced as well. So it'll be fully serviced and ready to just hit the road. Taking a walk down the passenger side of the truck, it's also in fantastic condition. The bodywork is virtually unmarked. It, every single panel is nice and straight and clean. Um, bar the odd wee minor stone chip here, reds are very hard colour to keep in, and they're, because it's such a big truck, you, there are a, a few stone chips over the bonnet, but we've touched most of them in with a wee touch up can. But other than that, the thing's in beautiful condition. The side mouldings are perfect, the RAM, SRT10 bags again, factory original bags, looks the part. All the black rubbers around the windscreen, uh, around the windows and all that sort of stuff are in immaculate condition. The aerial here, um, they're prone to getting broken off, those sort of aerials, so that one's in perfect condition as well. Um, coming right the way up to the, the front quarter panel, it's in beautiful condition. Original headlights and stuff, they, they, all the lights have obviously been converted for, uh, for UK roads. When it comes to the exterior of this truck, about the only thing that you could possibly quibble about is the condition of the wheels. Now, these are the, the factory original wheels. They're like a laser cut, uh, clear coat finish on them, and they're in original condition. We haven't inter interfered with them in any way, uh, shape or form. Now, wheels are something, a, a few guys have come in to me and said, truck looks phenomenal, are you gonna get the wheel sprayed? And there's one, I don't really like spraying wheels. I don't know why, I think part of it is because you, you'll never get the original, I don't think you'll ever get the original finish on them again. Um, this laser cut finish with like the brush effect in it. Um, and the face of the wheels, to me, look really good. It's only whenever the thing's sitting immaculately clean in the showroom, you notice that there's a wee bit of curb damage and some of the, the, the paint is flaking off on the inside there. Um, but it's really up to you. Um, if it's, to me, if it was going to be a daily driver, something you're going to take out in the road and use, then with my, all my own vehicles, I just run them until the wheels get to the point where I literally can't live with it anymore, and I get them, you know, painted or whatever, a reefer. Um, if it was going to be like a show pony where you're literally going to park it in the garage, only take it out on Sundays or weekends, on dry weather and stuff like that, take it to shows and things, then I definitely recommend getting the wheels done. But um, to my mind, I think that the pickup looks the part even with them in the sort of condition that they're in. Well, I'll, put, I'll take photographs of each rib and put them on the website so you can see exactly the condition that each one's in. But um, if it is something that's really bothering you, then I'm sure we could come to some sort of arrangement about getting them, uh, getting them refurbed. Just with the understanding that they're not going to look completely factory, but there's a couple of really good refurbished uh, wheel, re re wheel specialists here. And uh, there's one guy in Belfast, just outside Belfast, who does an excellent job. So we could get you uh, a really good quality refurb done, which we could come to some sort of uh, an arrangement on if it's uh, bothering you. While we're on the subject of wheels, I'll just tell you about the tyres. So they're, they're 305, 40, R22 uh, tyres, and they're in great condition all the way around. The back ones are, uh, are pretty much brand new. I think I've got those invoices there for them. They were got uh, a couple of weeks ago. The front ones have loads of tread left on, on them as well. So. Um, the, the tires are great. You're going to get, well, <laughs> depending on how heavy you are with the right foot, you might need those again pretty soon. But the front ones have certainly lasted you for a long time, and if you're sensible about it, they will also. Um, so the tires are in great condition all the way around. We'll take a jump inside the truck now and have a look around here. So it's um, fitted with the full SRT interior, so it's black leather and slate grey suede, suede inserts on the seats. Huge, big bucket seats, really supportive seats on it, and um, we got a really nice uh, driving position here. Uh, the, the condition of the interior is immaculate. There's literally everything about it is, is just perfect. And from the, all the switch gear, everything's working. There's no big wear amounts of wear in the door cards or, or the handles or anything. The steering wheel is in nice condition. The dash itself looks the part. The upholstery, everything is in really, really good shape here. I'll just run you through the uh, the controls and the features and stuff behind the wheel of the truck. Um, so keyed up first of all, we've got 68,360 uh, miles currently on the clock there. 68360. Um, as I said, conditions uh, fantastic. This is a uh, if you, my wife drives a a Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8, so it's. Um, it's the V8 version of the Grand Cherokee. It's a bit of a beast in its own right, but the controls and everything, if, you, if you've ever driven any of that Dodge Chrysler Jeep product, 
it's going to feel very familiar. So um, we've got uh, cruise control on the on the steering wheel. We've also got uh, stereo controls um, on the back of the steering wheel. Now, the only one that works is the volume because the stereo was replaced. The factory stereo was replaced with an aftermarket unit. Now the factory one is still underneath the uh, the driver's seat because it's got an infinity sound system with eight speakers and a subwoofer under the back seat. So I think the guy was telling me they needed to retain the original head unit um, to be able to run all that stuff. But they've uh, they've updated the, the stereo with an Alpine front load and CD player. Uh, but the volume on the, the steering wheel still works, so that's pretty good. Um, so that, yeah, so it's very familiar. Obviously you've got indicator stocks. Gear shift is up on the tree here. This, this truck's fitted with a, four-speed automatic uh, gearbox matched up to that. It's out of the, I think it's out of the heavy duty, the three and a half ton Dodge Ram. It's rated up to 700 foot-pounds of torque and it goes through a Dana rear axle with limited slip diff. So um, really chunky, beefy powertrain um, and it feels really solid whenever you're underway. Um, in terms of the instruments then, yeah. we've got a voltmeter, fuel gauge, taco, speedo, oil pressure, uh, temperature and then we've got an additional srt oil temperature gauge up here as well just because it's a high performance vehicle just give you a bit more information to keep an eye on the truck we've got our light controls over here we've got uh, you can turn it up and down for cargo lights out the back and then up in the head unit we've got our trip computer there so um it's currently on fuel economy it says 7.1 miles the gallon i think i said on my last truck video that if that concerns you in the slightest you should turn off this video right now do not buy the truck because that's fairly typical what this thing does it is not about fuel con fuel economy you don't buy this thing if you want to save the planet you don't buy it if you want an economical run around you buy this thing if you want to stand out from the crowd and uh just make an impact and that's what this thing does and it comes with a price and that's the price 78 miles they get on that's what you can sort of expect on a run i have seen it go up to uh 10 i think um and if you're running it on the gas then you can sort of double that as well because it's half the price of petrol so you know realistically on gas is maybe 15 16 miles a gallon which is pretty good considering um if the size of the thing but it's very accurate it does. that's one good thing about it it gives you the distance to empty as well so it's 25 miles so this is obviously that's the distance to empty on how much fuel you've got in the tank it doesn't take into consideration what's in the gas tank uh, out the back uh, got our odometer trip meter and uh time time run and stuff we got there this is also this is like for garage door closing this is more like an american thing but that's like radio frequency thing so you can program that to uh, to uh open and close your, your your garage door and then you can swap it over on to uh, metric units as well, liters per kilometer and stuff like that. So um, that's a nice little unit up there and uh, it's all obviously in perfect working order. Mirrors are good, the, the little, uh, oh sorry, sun visors, mirrors, all that sort of stuff is all working well, the little lights, bulbs in the mirrors. I mean literally everything on the truck is in perfect working order. Um, as I said, because you know we're pretty fussy about everything we do, whether it be at a boat or a truck or whatever. So we, we want things to be right, and we won't sell them unless they're all they're they're all in perfect condition. You know, um, heater controls down here. Everything's fairly simple and standard, working properly. All the direction controls are working well. You got air conditioning on the on the truck, which is blowing out uh, cold air. It's working well. Um, recirculating button. Uh, the rear. That's like a rear demist, but I don't even I don't think it has a rear demist. I don't know what that does. There's no there's no little uh, lines in the in the rear glass, so I don't know what that does. And then you got separate driver and passenger heater controls. This little boil here is the uh, the fuel gauge and the switchover for the the LPG. So whenever it's got a little green light on the G, it means you're running on gas. And whenever it's got a little light on the petrol tank it means you're running on petrol and just hit the button to swap it over the reason there's two buttons is because this because it's such a big engine it has a twin lpg system so there's two regulators in it um so but if you press one button they, they both turn over to they cycle together um lots of little storage compartments here in the, in the dash nice wee storage area there you can pop a phone or something into got a big cup holder uh here and again being an american truck these work for like the big gulps uh, but you can adjust them in. Um, we've got our 
ashtray in here, never been used. I wouldn't smoke in the truck or let anybody smoke in it. Cigarette lighter there as well. Um, we've got this third seat here in the middle, which is like a little occasional seat, but it's big enough for an adult to sit in. But there's a lot of storage underneath it. So in there, you've got a big, uh, big uh, storage compartment and a box of tricks to do with the Infinity audio system. And then if you want to fold this down, this doubles up as a big armrest. Nice big armrest with more storage underneath here. So you've got lots of little storage compartments there for firing all your bits and pieces in. And you've also got uh, a power outlet there, 12 volt power socket. So if you want to charge your phone or whatever, you can do that from there. Again, all the clips and catches and hinges are all working. Taking a quick look over on the passenger side of the truck here, a couple of other wee things I want to point out point out one is the auto dimming rear view mirror so you can turn that off and on that auto dims uh, so if you're out at night time you don't get blinded by lights behind you again I said as I said this visor mirror and everything's really good and um, we got a nice big glove compartment over here nice little metal or plastic metal effect trim um, with the SRT 10 badge and it just distinguishes this truck from the standard uh, Ram 5100 and uh, we've got the original Dodge um, owner's book here so the 2005 service manual and uh, the build sheet here so we've got the original equipment identification so it gives you a trim code tells you it's an all speed or all sorry all four speed automatic 4bre transmission lock up torque converter that's the limited slip diff 4.56 axle ratio dana m60 rear axle um it gives you your paint codes and stuff like that there so that's good that you have all that original stuff there's a whole heap of paperwork in another um folder in the back which I'll show you in a minute as well um, and you even got the night the red truck on the uh, on the book which backs up my claim that the red is the best color in this truck um, there is like an iPod uh, cable plugged into the back of that stereo too so you can plug in certain models of iPod or iPod, uh, you know iPhone under that there uh, stereo to play through it I'll just turn on the stereo a second actually to let you uh, to hear it because it, it has that big subwoofer and like eight speakers all the way around the cockpit, so it's a great audio system. It's a really good sound system and it's working perfect. There's an Alpine head unit there. And you've got the front loading uh, CD player as well, so you just pop that down. And you stick your CDs in there. So, uh, it's fairly fresh stereo and it, it's in perfect working order. It picks up all the, because it's a UK one, picks up all the UK stations and stuff too, which is a good thing. Um, so, as I said, everything over here, um, perfect, beautiful condition. The front seats, uh, front driver seat and passenger seat are uh, electrically adjustable. Um, so everything is for lumbar support, height adjust, front and back. The, uh, the only thing that's manual is the, the angle of the, the seat back. So that's the same on, for the driver seat and the passenger seat and they're both working perfectly. The only small flaw that this truck has, the only fault that I currently know about in the truck is the passenger side uh, wing mirror doesn't, um, it goes up and down okay, but it's not going side to side on this little controller here. Now you can hear the engine, you can hear a little electric motor running in the mirror, but there must be a wee linkage off or something broke or whatever, but I'm gonna take a look at that. Um, the, the driver side mirror is working perfect, up and down, left and right but the only thing that's not working is a left-right function on the passenger side door mirror. Apart from that, everything else is working perfectly. All four windows are going up and down as they should. The window locks, the door locks, everything's working. Uh, perfect central lock-in. There's two sets of keys with the truck. The remote controls are all working. Um, it's just in pretty much perfect condition. Door jams and everything on this uh, rear seat, driver side door are also perfect. Uh, internal trim, door chart, the little silver trim piece, handles, all that stuff's all perfect. And um, I just want to show you quickly the history file. So this big file came with the truck whenever I got it. Um, so it's got all the uh, all the history in there from whenever the uh, the boat was brought in from the States and SVA and all that crack. The original, the advert from whenever it was bought back in 07. Um, all the customs duty and all that sort of stuff. Previous tax discs and MOT discs. And I just want to briefly show you the the, the MOT test sheet from uh, February 2016. So she passed with a clean sheet. Um, imbalance on the, on the brake test was like 2%, so 30% less is a pass. Service brake performance 69%, 50% or greater is pass. 35% of the park brake stuff. So, and she had no minor defects or nothing like that there. So um, it's all in, uh, all in, you know it's a good 
100% condition, like you know, suspension, brakes, all that sort of stuff. Perfect. As I said, we will um, redo the MOT now as well because it's coming up to almost being due in the next six weeks or so. So we'll redo it now so you can buy it with a full year's test on it as well. Just want to show you the passenger side door jams and stuff. So um, obviously the doors, all the hinges are perfect. The door jams are in great condition. The door, all the side cards, little rubber seals, door cards, handles, uh, little ashtray thing there, never been used. The back seat of this truck, um, I don't think it's ever been really sat on. Um, I know the uh, the guy that we bought it from didn't have any kids or anything like that, so um, it's in immaculate condition. Um, everything in there looks the part. Passenger side door, again, hinges are perfect. Door jams are nice and clean. The edges of the door, the rubber seals, um, door card, handle, perfect. Door handle, window switches, everything's in really nice condition there. Um, as is the uh, the passenger seat. Again, you've got that leather and, and black, uh, slate grey suede on there. Um, the Dodge Viper floor mats in the footwells, they're in perfect condition. All the plastic on the door sill actually. It's an area where you can uh, quite often end up getting scraped and damaged and stuff for people getting in and out. It's in beautiful shape as well. Just looks almost as good as new. I'll open the bonnet here now and you can have a look at the heart of the beast, so to speak. This engine is the reason that I bought this truck. Um, that It's a bit like, I don't know, I, 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 I'm just a total petrol head. Um, and sort of horsepower junkie. It's the same, the, the exact same reason why, why, why my wife drives the, uh, the SRT8 because that V8 is phenomenal. And this thing here was just a natural next step up. I always wanted the SRT10 truck because of that Dodge Viper engine. It's an 8.3 liter motor, um, big displacement, you know, 500 horsepower output, huge amounts of torque. Um, and it's just V10, you know, it's super smooth revving, it's, it's power delivery is just instantaneous. It's absolutely fantastic fun to drive this truck um, because of that motor. The engine bay on this thing is really nice and clean as well. Um, you know, still got the, the, that's the factory original red paint on the rocker covers, the Viper logos in there. You see the, the LPG system here. Um, as I said, you sort of, you can take that or leave it. I mean, it is what it is, it does the job, but I, I personally like to run this thing on, on straight petrol as it was designed to be run. Um, it's pretty much factory standard, apart from this, this Volant uh, cold air intake. So um, this is one of these things you see people add to the trucks, a fairly easy modification to do. They claim that it gives up to maybe 18 horsepower, uh, increase in improvement in performance. Whether it does or not, I'm not too sure, but it's on there and it's matched up with that Magnaflow exhaust as well. There's also a brand new battery just been fitted to the truck, so it's a UASA uh, battery with a five year guarantee. Um, so we'll give you the, the, that's out of Halford, so we'll give you the, the receipt for that as well. So if you have any problems with that battery within the next five years, they'll replace it, no questions asked. Um, as I said, the, the truck's gonna, gonna get a full service before it's sold. We're just waiting on uh, brake pads coming for the back axle and then we're doing a full service. We're gonna get the engine oil filter, oil changed, fuel filter, air filter, um, all, the, uh, all the major service items, and just get the thing fully checked over and make sure it's ready for the, the test as well. We'll get it MOT'd. So as I said, it'll be sold with a full, full year's MOT, but that's a really nice engine bay. You know, it is a sort of, it's in the type of condition you could um, display that if you were taking it to one of the American car shows or whatever. Um, it's obviously not concours because it is a, a everyday driver truck, but um, for an 05 truck with 68,000 miles on it, it's in, it's in really nice shape. I'm going to fire the truck up now and let you hear um, hear how it runs um, for yourself. So. so you turn the ignition on and then you get a big red engine start button which looks like there's something impressive about to happen, which there is. One thing you have to remember though is don't press that button to turn it off. You gotta turn the, turn the ignition key back to stop the engine, but we'll fire it up here now and let you hear how it runs.
I thought I could maybe talk over <laughs> the sound of the exhaust, but I don't, I don't think that's going to work out. This thing is seriously loud. It's got that Magnaflow exhaust. It's really loud. Um, but uh, the, the, the factory one's there if you, if you, if you want to put it back on again. But I, I love it. I mean, that's part of the reason you buy a truck like this is to make the biggest amount of impact as you can. And a noisy exhaust certainly achieves that. But um, it's just a beast. Like, whenever you, whenever you give the, even the slightest wee dip of the throttle, the whole truck you know, rolls um, on the engine revving. It's just an absolute animal of a truck. I mean, I've driven some fairly sort of um, flashy sort of cars. I got the, the Porsche there with that, the Aero Cup kit on and the Cobalt Blue color scheme. It's sort of a bit of a head turner. Um, a guy I work along with drives a bright orange uh, Ford Mustang, one of the new shape ones. Um, We've, we've had other pickup trucks as well, Ford F-150s, diesel Rams, stuff like that. Nothing else that I've driven comes anywhere close to getting the amount of attention that this thing gets on the road. Um, I think it's a combination of the, the size of the thing, the bright red colour scheme and the noise um, that literally just turns, <laughs> the number of heads that this thing turns is unbelievable. If you pull into a phone station, there's people flock around it, they're taking their phones out, they're taking photographs. Everywhere you go, it drums up a serious amount of attention. It's fantastic for marketing. That's why we've got the stickers and stuff on it. You know, if you've got a business you want to market, um, it's a great marketing tool. Particularly if you need something for towing. I really like the fact that we're towing a boat, we're delivering a boat to a marina or down to a you know, uh, harbour or something. You roll in, in this thing, everybody's, everybody knows there's a boat being delivered, you know. Um, and they come over and they're talking to you about it and you make contacts and you, you, you know you sell boats off the back of it at the end of the day. So um, not only does it sort of stroke your ego but it also makes sense from a financial point of view. You can get it past the accountant, you can get it past the wife, that's an important thing too. Um, that's certainly how I justify all these mad trucks. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic bit of kit. I'm going to, it's getting late now but tomorrow we're going to take it out, um, take it a drive around, we'll show you exactly how the thing performs on the road um, and just give you a better idea of uh, what this truck uh, can do. So I've, I've owned and driven a good few American pickup trucks now and uh, this year the SRT10 definitely feels the least truck-like of any of them. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it is a performance vehicle. It's not a race car by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, you know, it sits on lower uh, springs. It, it's stiffer than a normal truck. Um, the handling, far better than a usual truck as well. And the performance, obviously, goes without saying that that's completely different to any normal American pickup truck. So it drives most like, I mean, you still know you're driving a truck, but she's nimble, um, it's quick, it's a really nice thing to drive actually. On longer journeys, lovely relaxing thing, um, cruise control and everything works perfectly. The seats are very supportive and comfortable. It's just a nice car to take with you on a long, you know, if you're going on a long run somewhere. Um, and then whenever you want to have a bit of fun with it, you can, you can do that too. The biggest problem on a day like today is getting the power down. you put your foot down the uh, the roar that comes out of the exhaust is just phenomenal really loud turns loads of heads um, and sounds the part I was a bit worried whenever I first bought it about drone because um, it is a loud exhaust that magnet flow is a loud exhaust I was thinking oh geez it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare on longer journeys and that's why I made a point to get in the after the standard exhaust the factory one from the guy I bought it off so we have the factory exhaust but I haven't owned it now for like three months or something and taken it on a, on a few good few long journeys you don't really notice it whenever you're cruising at motorway speeds you're not on the throttle so you don't get that really loud rasp out of the exhaust whenever you're on the overrun it's fairly quiet you know but yeah that's sort of what happens whenever it's wet very, very difficult to keep the to get the power onto the road there's no driver aids in this thing at all, no traction control. Um, it's just raw horsepower back to a limited slip uh, diff on the rear axle. And uh, 
it, but it's surprisingly easy to control because you've got all the weight up front with the engine, and the cab and stuff. Um, the back end's fairly light with nothing in it. Um, but it means that if the tail does go out on you, it's very easy, just a wee bit of corrective oversteer, very easy to control, um, and sort of, you know, it, you can look like a bit of a hero in this thing without that much skill involved, if you want to, you know, on a closed road or whatever, you're going somewhere at the weekend, you want to shoot, do a bit of showing off, but um, it's a really nice driving truck, there's no uh, squeaks or rattles out of it, I actually changed a couple of suspension bushes in the front end, Whenever we bought it, because there's a wee there's a wee rattle on the driver's side here, so we had all that sorted out. As I said, it's going to get a full service before it goes anywhere. I'm just waiting on those couple of bits and pieces coming in from the states, and uh, but she's driving really nicely. She's tracking in a straight line. There's no play in the steering. Um, brakes are very very good. Um, Drivetrain's good. Gear shifts good. You couldn't really fault it from a driving point of view. All the instruments are all working properly. The uh, controllers here, fan control, all that sort of stuff's all working well as well. never fails to put a, a smile on your face. You're sitting at sort of 45 or 50 mile an hour you, and you mash your foot <laughs> down to the floor. She just drops down a gear and she just goes like it's possessed. Uh, yeah, no, performance is, is fantastic. If you want to look at the overtake, get past slow moving traffic, it's a breeze in this thing. We're going to sell it with a with a full year's MOT, so you can be sure that everything's going to be perfect for the next year in it as well. Um, it has a, a tow haul mode, so you hit this button on the end of the gear shift, and it turns on a tow tow light. So it changes the. You heard that she just kicked down the gear there, so it changes the uh, the shift point on the gearbox and. Um, I think it sort of softens up the, the, the throttle response a wee bit as well, so if you're using the thing for towing, then you just engage that and it, it has a proper tow mode. Now it's not designed as an out and out tow truck, I mean for that you've got the Dodge 2500 and the 3500, the big ones, um, but still even though the towing capacity of this one is reduced because it's a performance vehicle, it's still 3400 kilos, so it's only 100 kg shy of like a Range Rover. Um, and it, the, like the maximum you can tow on the, on the road in the UK anyway, uh, behind an ordinary sort of car is three and a half tons, so um, it's pretty much towing the maximum you can have in the UK. So it's uh, it's still a fantastic tow vehicle. I mean, my reasoning, my rationale behind these sort of trucks is, if you were to take whatever thirty grand, twenty five or thirty grand to go and buy like a Range Rover or a Land Rover Discovery or something like that, which is a sort of the usual tow vehicles that you go for in this part of the world. It's going to get you a nice enough truck, don't get me wrong, or a nice enough Jeep, but in three or four years time, it's going to be worth half of what you paid for it. There's nothing really special about it. It's going to get you excited for maybe the first month or two that you own it, but after that, it just becomes any other normal car that doesn't stand out from the crowd. There's nothing special about it. If you're using it for a business, it doesn't really say anything about your business as such. This guy's trying to drive on this here. Okay. And uh, you know, it's just it's just like a fairly boring sort of choice. So the thing that I love about these trucks is they're completely out there in terms of like you know uniqueness uh, from a marketing point of view for business use. It's completely unique. And this thing, I don't care how long you own this thing for, it's always going to put a smile on your face. You jump in this and fire up that Viper engine and give it a big dose of the right foot. You're gonna, it's gonna get you excited, and it ain't gonna lose any money either. That's the other great thing about these vehicles is, you know, once if you buy them this sort of age, they they just seem to they've plateaued in my opinion. Like these 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 trucks have been between 25 and 30 grand now for the last three or four years, as long certainly as long as I've been ever looking at them. Um, okay, it's gonna cost you a wee bit more to run and fuel, but you know. You've no depreciation, so I'd rather spend my depreciation pounds 
putting a grin in my face with a big V10 engine than just losing it on the depreciation over the course of three or four years. So it's amazing how you can justify these things whenever you want to, but <laughs> I think they make a lot of sense on many levels. As you can see, the truck is driving beautifully, doing everything it's supposed to do, no shortage of horsepower and that sort of stuff. Um, and it's just a really nice driving truck. If you like the look of the truck, if you want to come and see it, or um, you know, we'll, we'll welcome any test or inspection. Um, if you want to talk to me about maybe getting it delivered over to mainland UK or Scotland or throughout Europe or whatever, we've got lots of experience in delivering boats and vehicles, so. Um, we can arrange that no problem please just give me a call or um, drop me an email at uh, sales at gulfstreamshop.com and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you uh, about the truck thanks very much for watching